Hi everyone, Elitist Datto here to talk about Root of Nightmares on contest mode. And in this video, I'll be going back to my roots. You know, 2015, King's Fall Datto. Let's go old school, huh? One last Elitist hurrah. I want to start by saying that the visuals, the environment, the setting, the sound, all that kind of stuff about the raid was absolutely phenomenal, as it historically is. I also want to start by saying that this video is not an attempt to persuade people into my line of thinking. It hasn't worked for nine years. It's not going to work now. I'm done with that. The community is done with that. You are going to think what you're going to think. It is impossible to convince anyone in the Destiny community of anything. Opinions are locked in stone. Nothing's going to change that. This is not me trying to take away your day one raid clear or day two raid clear. If you got one, I'm stoked you even bothered to try the raid in the first place because raiding is awesome. And so is day one and now day two raiding. Even if people cannot comprehend the fact that I am glad you beat the raid, and I thought the raid was too easy, can be mutually exclusive. I wouldn't have stayed up all night making the guide if I thought raiding wasn't important or fun, and I did it to encourage people to get in there. I am not here to take away your emblem. I'm just here to vent a little bit, a lot bit, and give my perspective and what I imagine some other people are thinking in the hardcore community. Just let me vent. Let me grieve like y'all won, okay? Casuals, people who think contest mode's too hard, you won. It's over. You win. Just let me say my piece so Elitist Datto can just die off. This is it. I saw something that really epitomized how far the contest version of the raid has fallen. And it was this post that I found on Reddit. The title of this post was called I'm happy the new raid isn't insane. It's very noob friendly. This was posted while the contest mode was still active. I've seen countless comments along the lines of, you know, thanks for making this one easy, Bungie. And I don't want people to go harass others for their statements. And if you do that, you're an asshole. But take a look around. You will find loads of similar sentiments. I found tons of comments pretty much anywhere that I went. This is the state of the Pinnacle Challenge piece of content in Destiny 2. As a hardcore player, the contest mode of the raid was, honestly, an embarrassment, a letdown, and we have power crept so far that I don't even know what can be done. My team placed 152nd in the world. Our previous worst was 25th, VOG challenge mode, D2. Apparently, I was the only person in the world to have placed top 100 in every raid that's ever come out. That streak is now over, and that sucks. I was really hoping to make it every single raid until the end of this saga. That would have been, you know, quite an achievement. That's quite a far drop down, and obviously the team is disappointed with our collective performance. But an argument I've been seeing nonstop, that has been posted to everyone who did not get first place, is boiling down to, oh, you didn't place well, guess the raid wasn't that easy, huh? Which is a stupid argument, because something can still be easier than what we are used to, and we can also not perform at the highest level. This place was pretty much about learning mechanics, mechanic, rather, or in pretty much every top team's experience, ignoring a pretty significant one. My gripe isn't necessarily with the mechanics themselves, although actually, it kind of is. But again, it's rather with the combat challenge. Let's get personal with my team for a moment. I imagine some people may be interested in why we think we placed much lower than usual. If there's one thing that my team tends to do well, it is preparation and damage check encounters. We were actually feeling quite confident leading into the raid with our prep. I know Thunderlord DPS was not on many people's lists. We came prepped with that. And spirits were pretty high because we thought that we'd experience something more like Valve the Disciple again. 
our execution of damage strategies tends to be quite strong. I think we're one of the best teams at it, which is normally what gives us an advantage over other teams. This advantage was completely irrelevant this time, and fast puzzle solving in raids has never been our strongest quality. Sometimes we click, sometimes we don't. When our advantage is essentially given to everyone else in the form of bosses that don't require any sort of strong execution of a damage strategy, there are no damage checks, and our puzzle solving skills aren't up to snuff, well, we were probably not going to perform that great. We are marathon runners, and Root ended up being more of a sprint. We were not ready for what the raid ended up being, and we got humbled really quickly after our kill. On the night before the raid, I said that I had a hunch that we were overthinking our prep, and I thought that we were just going to equip one loadout and rock it through the whole raid, and we did exactly that. This is absolutely not to take away from the World First team. I cannot be happier for them. Puns is a friend of the team. Obviously, they played out of their minds to get a raid clear in two and a half hours. But I think a common sentiment amongst the hardcore community is that 2.5 hours for the world first clear was much faster than a lot of people were hoping for, and the experience was a lot easier than we were hoping for. Let me put it this way. King's Fall, a raid that literally already existed, took longer to clear on normal mode on day one than a brand new raid that we knew nothing about. Obviously, if you hate me or are much more jaded or cynical than I am, which I did not think possible before today, that all of this is cope, think whatever you want to think. We were good at a thing, that thing no longer mattered, and we also took some L's. We'll be back for the reprisal raid and final shape, but after that, I don't know what the team is going to look like. Moving on. The difficulty. What happened? What happened here? Why is the legend version of the exotic mission more difficult than contest mode raiding? Why is the legend, not even master, legend nightfall Mars battleground more scary than contest mode raiding? How did the rest of the game get spiked in difficulty to the point where so many people are complaining about it? People complaining about patrol, but when it comes to the one time per year, twice, whatever, that the game is supposed to be super hard, we get this. People were destroying this place on contest like it was a normal mode raid. Three mans, duo content, Rat King kills. There's some solo content in there. There's a flawless run. And Bungie has said, very recently, that if you completely ignore elemental build crafting, you will experience day one raid-like combat difficulty on master mode, which has surge and overcharged weapons active. So master will be an easier contest mode by multiple magnitudes according to Bungie. That will be the new normal. For master. Have you run the raid on normal by the way? I ran normal mode and I didn't use sprint, secondary jump, or aim down sights just to prove a point for almost the whole thing. Raids are the pinnacle content for the majority of players in the game. Casuals, dads with 17 kids, you name it. To most people, raids are the pinnacle content, pinnacle challenge in Destiny. Most people struggle even getting into one, much less completing a raid. Contest raids, on the other hand, are supposed to be the pinnacle content for the hardcores, the elites out there looking for a challenge, or so I thought anyway. And while a big part of contest mode is the raid race, it's not only about the raid race. I feel like this is a misconception touted quite a lot, that the raid race is for the elites, and day one is for the casuals. It's not just about the race. It's also about being challenged at the highest level that the game has to offer in every possible way that we can be challenged at the elite level. And that did not happen this time around. And that makes me feel not good after waiting a full year for a brand new raid. So if it ever seems like people are trying to gatekeep contest mode, 
It's because the hardcores out there historically have had very little content in the game to keep them challenged, and the contest mode was the one or two times per year that they actually felt challenged. That felt like it was taken away this time, and it stings a bit more because it's a brand new raid. We only get one of those per year. It's not just the race that matters. It's not the emblem that matters. I don't care if you get 17 emblems. The challenge of the experience is what matters to players like myself. More people getting an emblem is a side effect of an easier raid experience, and thus people think that hardcore players wanting a harder raid means we want fewer people getting a completion or getting an emblem. This is not true. No one actually cares about people getting an emblem. People care if the contest was truly challenging, and this time, it was not. Some quick stats. 45,000 clears in two days. 17,000 in the first day. 17,000 is a new record, and 45,000 is almost equal to the total number of day one clears by every team in every other Destiny 1 and Destiny 2 raid on day one combined, excluding challenge mode clears for reprised raids. Mechanics talk. This place was basically ad clear the raid. And I'm all for enemy density. It's not like clearing out tons of enemies at insane rates with high uptime on mobilities isn't fun. In the season battleground, why am I not afraid of standing in the middle of a group of Cabal on contest? I'm three feet away from a contest tormentor, the scariest enemy ever made apparently. I don't care. I don't even care. They're right there. Grab me. See if I care. I thought it sucked not being able to really help with mechanics on day one. We had two people start working on them, and outside of that, I just couldn't do anything because trying to help would cause more issues. I was not able to help. We actually hindered ourselves by even having two people doing the mechanic in the first encounter. It should have been one. I couldn't give any insight into anything because at most, you needed two people doing everything for three of the four encounters, dungeon level mechanics for three out of four encounters. I might have well not said anything for two hours until we got to the planet fight where I took a little bit of a lead in the encounter, but for Nezarek, I could have muted my mic and nothing would have changed. The second encounter, the launchers lost us about 20 minutes thanks to them launching our teammates to their death or to the wrong floor. I think they're a cool mechanic, but we know that any sort of physics-based stuff in this game is gonna be subject to not always functioning exactly 100% properly. The remaining four players did more ad clear. And every 30 seconds, we just had to make sure that they got a buff, but even if we didn't get the buff, it wasn't a big deal because you could just ignore the enemy you needed to kill anyway until the next buff came around. Encounter 3 was a bit more interesting and probably my favorite of the bunch as it at least feels like there's a lot going on. One or two people doing ad clear, not, not the biggest deal in the world. I thought the planet rotation and movement was a very cool experience. It's a very nice spectacle, even if the mechanic boils down to you hit a button over here and then you run over there and then you hit the button over there. But you know, we can simplify any raid mechanic down to that level if we really want to. That's not the most fair. I'm torn on Nezarek right now. On the one hand, I do appreciate that if you do a thing fast enough that you can ignore other things. If you are so good to go fast enough to completely ignore a wipe mechanic, then that is your right to do so. But on contest, it just, it just doesn't feel right. Now, has this happened in the past in day one raid races? Absolutely. Shiro Chi, Insurrection Prime, Sanctified Mind. But it feels more egregious nowadays than in the past because in the past, those things didn't feel as problematic. Maybe that's not the right word, but not as impactful as it did on this encounter. Shiro Chi's stun being ignored was just part of the Last Wish madness and ended up being a small segment of the big picture. Insurrection Prime, it kind of hindered you to ignore phase synergy since it gives you a big damage bonus, but you could still ignore it. And Sanctified Minds, one break versus two break, wasn't really a matter of life and death. I guess at least until you got to the Enrage. The Nezarek White mechanic is a matter of life and death, but it is just more efficient to completely ignore it, because even if you whiff on it, you wipe, you start over, no big deal, because the phase is one minute, less than a minute. 
no other mechanics were really time-based in the past either. You had to be good enough to deal all that damage to get around one of those mechanics. Here, damage is not involved at all. Speaking of damage, my team two-phased on contest with five Thunderlords and a Divinity. Remember when everyone thought Divinity was going to be useless with its nerf? Uh, well, yes again, because uh, this strategy is one of the easiest strategies to execute, and it is one of the best in the game right now. Not only that, but Nezarek is basically completely defenseless when you stand on a plate to deal damage, which is what everybody is doing. I don't know what the design process was for Nezarek in terms of what he's normally doing when a damage phase is happening or where Bungie thought people were gonna stand, but he's a non-issue outside of a couple of boops and a teleport. And for the final god of pain, that feels like a miss. Well of Radiance also literally do be in the game, so I'm not sure how much they can really do anyway. This isn't even going to dive that hard into the frame rate issues, where playing at higher frame rates causes you to take more damage from certain attacks. This mechanic of high frame rates increasing damage taken has been in the game since quite a while ago, and has recently started to become more of an issue, but came to a head with the raid because people with good computers were getting destroyed by Nezarek, while people playing on lower frame rates got tickled because higher frame rates meant that you took more damage because damage on certain things in the game is tied with frame rate. I hate to be guy who tells dev to just fix your game guy because I hate those people a lot. But also, why is tanking my frame rate a legitimate strategy? Is that a strategy in any other game? People are getting flung into a death pit in the campaign with some of the launchers. You think this wasn't going to happen in the raid? At least there's alternate means of getting across the gap in the second encounter. There are no alternate means of taking less damage during Nezarek besides capping your frames. The one thing that held people up at Nezarek could have been avoided by changing system settings. Not your build, not your mods, not your resilience, your system settings on PC. You're going to have people being immortal because they play at 45 FPS. And in case you're wondering why your favorite streamer's gameplay looks like a PowerPoint in the next raid race, this will be the reason why. Every PC player will be going into the next raid frame capped heavily. Bet money on it. I think it's fine if Bungie wants to make a raid with combat heavy challenges versus pure mechanical challenge. But the ratio here was off. And if you are going to have a combat challenge, then there needs to be a challenge aspect. And when I can literally not use an entire weapon slot for the entire raid, that seems like things are off. Machine gun kills in the day one raid, 1906. All other weapons combined, 200 and change. I don't know what happened in between Valkaor and this place, where we went from mechanically and combat demanding final bosses to one person following a line while five people kill ads or two people following a line and four people kill ads. Being a new player and being told you're getting put on ad clear because you're inexperienced in a raid setting really sucks if you're trying to learn. In this raid, that's pretty much the only thing going on. So, you know, good news for people who want to be on ad clear duty or good news for people who can't handle the ball mechanic in the Corrupted. I thought the Gauntlet in Val was a relatively tightly tuned experience on day one for the most part. What happened? It's been one raid. What happened? And the damage checks? Nothing. Nothing. Nezarek fell over in two phases. Wasn't even close. Third boss. I don't even remember his name fell over. No tension. As soon as you nailed the mechanics, one or two tries, you're done. Move it along. What happened? What happened? A lot of people have asked me what happened in between Last Wish and now. Why aren't things as epic as Last Wish? Why aren't we ever going to get an experience like Last Wish ever again? And it's for multiple reasons. Let me give you a little you know, history lesson in case you weren't around. Before I start, I want you to now realize that the time between right now and Last Wish releasing is now longer than the time between D1's launch and Last Wish. Just picture that in your brain. Just let it, let it kind of marinate in there. 
Okay, and now we're moving on. Last Witch was never going to be the norm. Last Witch was an anomaly, an exception to the rule. While I would love another Last Wish type experience today, it's never going to happen again. Those days are over. Not necessarily the raid itself or how many bosses we had, but the fact that only two teams cleared it in the first 24 hours, three if you want to tack on another couple minutes. Last Wish didn't have contest mode either. So what happened? Well, leveling in Forsaken was much stricter than it is today, and the concept of contest mode wasn't even a thought yet. Leveling was capped in a way where, in order to get higher levels, you needed to move to new tiers of content, but the amount of rewards available got lower as you climbed in level. We didn't know it at the time, but in order to be prepared for Last Wish, you basically needed to be playing and leveling every single day for about 10 days straight, and this included people glitching out Prime Engrams for even more of an advantage. And even then, by the time you got to Riven, the overwhelming majority of teams could not compete because they were just too low level. I remember being the lowest level on my team because I had to make videos and grind and I did some thing in LA. And I think Riven was, what, 590 power? And I was around mid 550s with a lot of my team in the 560s. And we were considered among the highest levels in the entire game. That was the main hangup, the power grind. Imagine the rage today if this was the case, if you had to do all that. I'm with you. I'm not exactly trying to go back to that either. I don't want to have to hyper grind like that anymore for a raid. But it was a big part of why something like Last Wish ended up being the way that it was. We also didn't have the tools that we had today. Dude, Forsaken was the first time we got to use shotguns outside of the power weapon slot in a year. Like, we were still figuring the stuff out. There was no artifact perks mods, surges, anything like that. You had a Well of Radiance, Whisper of the Worm, and a Dream. And that's it. Last Wish is glorified a lot more, I think, because of the race itself. A lot of those rose-tinted glasses on for a lot of people. But you're absolutely never going to see something like that ever again. Ever again. Did I have fun in the raid? Of course, I still had some fun. It's not like I was miserable the whole time or anything. It's a new raid, dude. You're in the moment. You're competing. It's a rush. Stuff's always going to be relatively fun when it's new. But with some time to reflect and kind of think about how I was actually feeling during the raid, it's pretty clear that we've hit a new low when it comes to the absolute pinnacle piece of challenge content in Destiny. We have now power crept Day one contest mode rating. It's happened. I think it's been a problem since Deepstone. Some of you veterans of the channel may remember my Deepstone video. And it's just kind of been going since then. Other than maybe like the gauntlet in Vow and a couple of damage check bosses. You know, look at King's Fall. We were spawn camping enemies at the door. <sighs> I don't know what happened, man. All right, I don't, I don't know. I think some past raid races have annoyed me, but they made up for it in other ways. This time around is, is the first time in a while where I think I've been more disappointed than happy. Although part of that is absolutely based on our placement. Maybe this is all for naught. I don't know. Maybe the scaling was off and Bungie's going to come out and say like five minutes after this video is live that they messed it up. You know, if, but also, if I got to hear, oh, it's so easy, don't use a machine gun, like it's divinity or something, I'm going to lose my mind. Shut up. Just sh sh stop. I'm hoping that Bungie restores some glory to this piece of content once considered challenging for Final Shape because this tuning was not it. I don't know if there's a disconnect in there with the Artifact Perk team and the Sandbox team and the Raid team and the Test team or something but y'all we gotta have some zoom meetings or something this is why i don't like being fix your game guy i don't know what's going on in there but it's not my job it's not my job to know what's going on in there do i feel like we've been trending in this direction for a little while now yeah is it possible that this was just a fluke of an experience yeah totally but this video is here to say that root was not up to par and feels wildly inconsistent in difficulty compared to the rest of the game. Got people out here complaining about Legend Lost Sectors 
and I'm hip firing a machine gun to victory. No rally flag, no aim. I play my life more in a legend law sector than in any form of this raid. No consistency there. When I see stuff like, quote, as someone who likes to turn my brain off, this is all I wanted, end quote, and that's the sentiment for contest mode raiding, then I think, eh, you know, we're not in good shape with contest. My fear is that raids are gonna become metrics driven because they are so expensive to create. Again, I've mentioned this several times, we are lucky to get raids at all in this game anymore with how expensive they are to make. What if this is the tipping point? I don't know yet, we got a couple of raids to find out. Majority of the player base is loving it, so that's probably some feedback that Bungie is gonna recognize quite heavily, which is why someone like myself is concerned. What's more important to their business? Upholding the difficulty of the contest mode or making it easier so that more people get to experience and clear the raid on day one? Well, I'm gonna guess it's the latter. Have y'all done this on normal mode yet? Probably the easiest raid that exists today, easier than raids that have old level scaling at 1600, whatever it is now. People are gonna struggle with legit Riven more than they will with this raid. That is four and a half year old content. Saw this sentiment a few times. Why does the new raid need to be the new stepping stone into raiding? Why can't any of the various older, easier pieces of raid content be the stepping stone, be the noob friendly things? The new thing has to be the easiest, but what about new players, Datto? New players shouldn't be in the contest mode. It's not designed for them. Or it shouldn't be. If we're completely, if we need to completely disintegrate the game down to the lowest common denominator, if we are crushing the game down so badly that everything needs to be available to be completed by people who are brand new to the game, that contest mode needs to be completable by brand new eight day old players, then just let me know. I don't want the raid balanced around guy who has never made a build in his life and who must use a sidearm for day one content because they have more fun that way. Hashtag trespasser gang, rise up. <sighs> that's it. I think that's all I got. Um, Hoping this was just some learning curve stuff. Maybe Bungie learning how powerful we actually are. Maybe there's someone on the raid squad over there yelling at an artifact perk designer like, you know, you gave them how much power ammo? I, I hope it's not a sign of things to come, but I wouldn't be blindsided if it was, you know? Like, I get it. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.